if there are two people in the club, I come to play. Because I just feel, our Blakey used to tell us, you know, the music comes from the creator to the musician, to the audience. So the thing is that if there's one person, we don't know if that's the person who's just hearing Kenny Get for the first time. I can't really hold back, I have to play. Oh wow, there was a lot of music in my home. Um, you know, being from, you know, from Detroit, the Motown, my mom was listening to Motown sounds and my father was listening to jazz. So I heard people like Mahalia Jackson, uh, James Cleveland, Aretha Franklin, uh, The Temptations. I started playing the saxophone because uh, my stepfather, Benny, he played saxophone as a hobby. I liked the smell of the case, which is strange. There was a, a, a velvet interior, and I used to love the smell of that, that, that case, the interior. <laughs> I met uh, my high school band director, Bill Wiggins, and that's what changed everything. I heard a re record of John Coltrane, it was called The Blowing Session, and it was with uh, it was, uh, Hank Mobley, Johnny Griffin, Art Blakey, Lee Morgan, a whole bunch of great musicians. And Johnny Griffin was playing, he was beautiful, he was playing this, like, he was playing all these fast things, and Train came in, and he went, bah! That changed my life. It changed my life. He played one note, and when I heard this one note, that was always my quest. I wanted to find one note that would touch people, even to the point that I wanted to have, uh, I wanted to play a note that even God would say, that's a beautiful note. And so that's what I was searching for. Once I heard that one note that Coltrane played, I was searching for that, searching. And then I started to realize that all of my heroes like Duke Ellington, he had his own sound. Thelonious Monk had his own sound. Coltrane had his own sound and his own music. And it was my quest, I wanted to find this beauty. I had started playing with the Duke Ellington Orchestra right out of high school. I thought I would just go out and play a little bit, but I ended up playing in the band for three and a half years. The Ellington band was a very crucial uh, moment for me because I learned how to blend. I learned to blend with 18 musicians. Well, what I learned with Art Blakey was how to, to build a solo. Art was teaching us how to be leaders. I mean, he, he allowed us to take the mic. He allowed us to, to uh, direct the band. Actually, I uh, auditioned for a French movie with a, a tenor saxophonist by the name of Gary Thomas. And um, he came in and he said, well, are you interested in playing with Miles? Because he's looking for an alto player. So of course, I'd love to play with Miles. Miles called me back later, and he said, well, send me some music. So I sent him some music. I think I had some music. Uh, I played with Art Blakey and the Jazz Messenger, and I ended up joining the band. Right. This is my favorite picture of uh, me and Miles Davis. Um, there are a lot of them, but this is the one that I keep on, on my wall. He took off my sunglasses, and he looked at me, and he looked to the bell of my, my saxophone, and I to say, there's something beautiful coming out of this saxophone. And that was the start of that. We started with Miles. And we had a great experience because, you know, with Miles, we had a kind of call and response that wasn't taught. It was basically, he played a line, I played it back. He didn't tell me. I just thought that's what I was supposed to do. With my band, it was different. I had to do everything because I was up and coming. Even though I played with Miles, that was Miles' situation. Now I had to create my own situation. And so, I started, you know, from the bottom. I and mean, even though I played with, with Miles, I had to start and start building, playing in different halls that weren't the big halls that Miles played in, and I had to build up to it, and I was down for it. I knew that my influences at that time were people like, I mean, uh, McCoy Tyner and Woody Shaw. I had been in, you know, playing music with them, so I really wanted to, to keep that, some people call it spiritual jazz, I wanted to keep that kind of music going. Well, I, I believe the music does heal people. That's the reason that I played this music, because I know that it heals me, it heals my soul, it heals my spirit. And I know in turn, when we're playing, that's the idea that you want to convey to the audience. You want to play something uh, for them to experience. Coming full circle, I realized that's really what I'm doing. 
in some way I'm a preacher on this on my si on my saxophone. I'm playing notes and I'm playing these notes to reflect uh, the spirit of being in church or the hymns. That's what I'm looking for, and that's what I've been you know doing all these years. I'm trying to lift the spirit because to me, music was always about. Um, trying to heal. There's still that one note is still about trying to heal people, trying to get to the soul. Sounds good to me. <laughs>